Okay, I'll be starting with a clip that will review the multiple choice and matching section of the Unit 6 test, and then I will conclude with a clip which reviews the free response. Here we go. We had only one matching question on this test. Um, really quickly, this discusses a negative value for something that occurs spontaneously. That has to do with delta G. The answer would be A. A measure of disorder. That's a fancy way of saying the word messy. Messy has to do with delta S. B. A low value. It happens quickly. Now remember, whenever we're talking about rate, we are talking about the energy of activation, EA. That would give the answer D here. If it has a positive value, it absorbs heat. Absorbing heat is delta H, and yep, delta H is C. Process of elimination would have given that as well. It's important to remember that delta G and EA are not related by an equation, nor by common sense. Just because a reaction happens does not mean that it happens quickly. Going down to number five, they're asking us to solve for delta G, and we see steps. We see one, two, three steps. We see no other terms. So we're going to solve for this, rearranging the equations. Here we go. Delta H, the first X. We know that they both have CH4 in common. We need to flip that to a negative X. The second reaction, SO2 is in common. They're on the correct side, same coefficient. So we're going to keep this as a Y. Okay, we use that, we use that. This last reaction has H2O, and this is H2O. They're on the same side. We have a coefficient of a 2 here. So it's going to be 2Z. So rearranging it, we're going to have 2Z plus Y minus X, giving us the answer of D. 6. Addition of a catalyst. What effect will it have before we begin? All a catalyst does is lower the energy of activation. It affects EA, thus increasing the rate. That is it. Enthalpy will change. No. No effect on delta H. Entropy will change. No. No effect on delta S. The activation energy will decrease. Yes, that is actually true. I apologize. I didn't mean to scratch that out. So the answer should be three only. Seven, which of the following reactions is entropy increasing? So let's break this down first. Entropy is delta S. Increasing means becoming positive. So which one of them gets the messiest? Looking at this problem here, this one goes from three to two, so that gets cleaner. This one goes from 2 to 2, all gases, it's going to stay 0. This one goes from 2 to 2, um, all gases, that's 0. This one goes from 2 to 3, all right, so that is a winner so far. And this one goes from 5 to 4. So D goes from 2 moles to 3 moles. It gets the messiest. Um, all phases are in the gas phase, so that's going to be the answer. Eight is a great problem. I want you to slow-mo this or rewind it and make sure you understand eight. If an endothermic process, meaning delta H is positive, is spontaneous, meaning delta G is negative, which of the following must be true? Okay, delta G is greater than zero. No, we know that delta G is negative. Delta H is greater than zero. Yes, so two is an option. We can get rid of one. Delta S is greater than zero. Okay, now that they brought this variable into it, let's write out our equation. Delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. Plug it in. We know that delta G is negative. We know that delta H is positive minus T. All right, let's try this out. Let's make delta S negative. If delta S is negative, these become positive. And there is no possible way for three positives to make a negative. Impossible because we do know the reaction is spontaneous. So delta S must have been greater than zero, leaving us with choice C as the answer. Nine, which of the following we predict will have the highest bond energy? Okay, which one is the hardest 
to break. Really quickly, I'm going to draw out the Lewis structures here. Notice I am not showing my lone pairs on these here. I do apologize about that. Um, which one will be the hardest to break? Hey, yeah, karate chop, easy. Get rid of that. Hey, yeah, karate chop, easy. Hey, yeah, karate chop, easy. Hey, yeah, a little harder there. Oh, sure. All right, hardest to break. We got three boards, three bonds. Actually, one of them is a sigma, and we have two pi bonds there. Hardest to break for sure. Ten. Based on the following, uh, what is the enthalpy change? And the reaction represented above. Okay, they're asking for delta H. We're looking for key symbols, and there it is, formation. Sum of the products minus the sum of the reactants. Let's plug it in. Sure, we don't need to do that. Sum of the products. We have one SO2. The value for SO2 is negative 300. And we have two H2Os. The value for H2O is negative 250. And we are going to subtract that from two hydrogen peroxides, and the value for that is negative 150. And this is an element. It does not have a formation value. That is going to go to zero. Therefore, we have this is going to be negative 300, so we're going to have negative 800 minus. A minus 300, which gives us a negative 500 kilojoules. There it is. Actually, you know, these should be kilojoules per mole. So, a little typo there. All right, we're going to move on to the free response on the next video clip.